Xin Chow, what's up everybody? How we doing? Let me get the thumbnail in. So, what we're going to talk about today is flights in and out of Vietnam from USA to Vietnam, from Vietnam to USA, timelines and how they make a difference. And I'm here to tell you they make a pretty big difference. Um, prices can vary all over. What airlines do I like to fly? All this extra stuff. I'm going to just try to give you my best tips and tricks <coughs> that I've learned from flying around in those areas. Excuse me. If you do enjoy this video, again, I'd greatly appreciate it if you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. YouTube has been deleting subscribers. Check to make sure you're still subscribed. Comment if you like. If you don't like the video, hit do not recommend this channel. Hit a thumbs down and even leave a nasty comment if that so suits you well. You can also support the channel on Patreon. I greatly appreciate that. It helps support the channel when we're in uh, periods of downtime like we are now due to family emergency. So let's get going first. Uh, where you're flying out of is very important, the first thing. If you're on the East Coast, it is going to be a more expensive flight and it's going to be a longer flight for the most part, depending on where you're at. Most likely what you're going to want to do is get to New York first and then book a flight from New York out to Vietnam. That's going to be probably your best route and that's going to leave you with some choices. It's mainly going to be uh, ANA, All Nippon Airways through Japan, which is in my opinion the best airline to fly. If you can fly it, fly it, even if it's got some layovers there, uh, here and there. I highly recommend it. The way I came home is I flew from Saigon to Japan. Did I? Yeah, I did. Saigon to Japan, and then Japan to Newark, and then New York to RSW. So I had to take the $50 tram, like bus, from uh, New York to Newark. Because this was a flight that was booked two days ahead of time, so you didn't have many good options left anymore. So they had to kind of figure out whatever route and throw you on whatever thing it could try to find. Um, there are limitations to, to just programming in a beginning goal of where you're at to an end destination. It's not going to always spit you out the best ideas, so it's better to try to find a hub of a place. Other things I would recommend is fly to LAX first. I mean, LAX to Saigon, and I think uh, San Francisco to Saigon, if you're at least a month ahead. Like, I'm looking at flights right now on August 11th from LAX to Saigon with one stop, which is the stops in Korea. It's about a 30 hour flight for 11 million dong for like 480 bucks. Like, that's insane. You know, you can't beat that pricing. That is as cheap as cheap is going to get. They've got a more direct one. What is this one? How, this has got to be a real low layover. Oh, two hour layover in Seoul. They've got one for 20 hours for the same price, where it just goes Korea Air to Incheon. You're in, you're in Incheon, Seoul for two hours, and then you're directly over to Saigon for 11 million 389 thousand dong, which is extremely good price. Korean Air is actually a pretty good airline too. Uh, ANA is a bit better. You know, ANA is is good, but. Korean Air is just as good. Korean Air is going to give you free alcohol, free food, the whole entire plane ride, which is kind of what you want, uh, in my opinion. That's the way to do it. Uh, you know, if you're not a drinker, doesn't apply too much, but if you like to get a drink on and have an enjoyable flight, which is the way I do, I like ANA or Korean Air because they provide you with all the alcohol you want and they have really good food on their flights. So that's your route if you want to fly direct. It's pretty easy to fly direct. Like, I'm looking here and there's so many options in August. Like if I could have afforded to stay here one more month, meaning channel wise, um, I probably would have went for one of these flights. Now my flight back sucks. It, it's, it cost me around 1200 bucks and I have to fly from New York. I have to fly first here to New York and then from New York to LAX and then LAX to Japan and then I have to do a day layover in Japan and then from Japan to Saigon and that was it everything else was booked man like I plugged in so many different timelines so many different dates so many different departuring airports I even looked at flying directly to LAX uh, flying directly to 
San Francisco. You know, it it was insane. Like, there was nothing that was under, you know, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred bucks. So it sucks. Like I said, this trip is going to cost me an arm and a leg, but it's absolutely completely worth it for me. Uh, you know, family comes first, so of course I needed to come out here and, and see my mom and make sure she's good. And now I'm here helping take care of everything when everybody else has to go and, and run around their lives. So uh, I think my sister will be back down here soon. We don't know yet, but you can fly direct, but you need to give yourself a month a month ahead of time. Even leaving the country, you want to give yourself a month ahead of time currently, because there just aren't that many flights. And if you're going to have a layover, you want a large layover. You don't want a one-hour layover. So many flights are getting delayed. It's insane. They're getting delayed in Vietnam. They're getting delayed in America. They're getting delayed everywhere. There's just a shortage in airlines right now of staff. So it's affecting the quality of delays. So, you know, if you're a pilot or anything, drop your comments in, in below. But my two favorite airlines to fly <coughs> direct to Vietnam our ANA Korean Air, uh, Vietnam Airlines is whatever. It's just not as good. It's not as good as a product. I mean, you have so many choices from LAX to uh, to Saigon in August. It's insane. You can fly Singapore Airlines. It's so affordable. Like it just sucks. None of this stuff was available on any of the dates that I was plugging in. Like all of July is pretty capped out for flying back to Saigon from anywhere. It literally decreases by price by like 50% as you go into August. So if you're booking a trip in, in August or on, you need to book your flights now, guys. And you need to think about how you're going to do it. If you're in the East Coast, I do not recommend trying to fly out of the East Coast. Like just programming it in whatever city you're in. You're going to almost will always want to go to New York first. And then from New York, go to San Francisco or L.A. And then leave from there. Pick whatever airline you want to pick. And then you've got a direct flight. There's a big hurdle in being on the East Coast. It's so much easier if you're on the West Coast. Like, if you're in LA, that's the cheapest flight I've ever seen. That's is, this is returning back to what my flight was. I flew Korean Air when I first came, and it was fantastic. Um, and that's what the price was. It was like 500 bucks, 450. <clears throat> so, it's starting to be, you know, uh, a really good deal if you look in August on. So there it seems like all the airlines are starting to get their stuff back together. Now the reasons why I like Korean Air and, and ANA, it's not just because of the alcohol. The the planes are amazingly nice, the service is great. Mainly ANA has probably the best airline you'll ever fly. I don't know where you can get a better experience. Maybe some of these uh high end Dubai airlines and stuff, but as far as somebody just being in an economy they treat you very, very well. Uh, I get the emergency row seat, of course. They don't charge you extra for that either. You just have to know what you're doing when you book a flight. So I have the emergency row for the whole flight on the way back, same as I had it on the way here. And they just treat you really good, man. If, if you do drink, it's awesome. You can just keep running out of drinks. I get vodka doubles and a beer. And then I'll, I'll get a meal. I'll drink the vodka double and the beer. And I'll drink a enough of those three or four rounds of that and then just pass out and wake up at the next meal and do the same thing so for me it creates a very easy pain-free uh, flight process now it is gonna suck that I have to spend a whole day in Hanada I think the Park Hyatt's open there before though I've stayed at that quite a few times in the past so hopefully it's open and it's not still COVID closed I can't find really any information that it is open or not but uh, if you do know if you've been in the Hanada Airport as long as Park Hyatt's open, that's not a big deal. Even if it's not, they've got wall chargers everywhere. We can do some cool live streams because they got uh, super powerful free Wi-Fi in the Hanada Airport. So either way, we'll make the best out of it. But I just simply couldn't afford to take a more direct flight. You're talking they were like just beginning for like more direct flights that had anything under a 30 to 34 hour travel time was like $2,500. And I'm not going to spend you know, almost $5,000 in just flights for this, for this trip, you know, that's going to absolutely crush me. Um, you know, we'll get it back on the road with the support of you guys, you know, everything is, it happens for a reason and we'll keep her moving and we'll get her done. You guys have all been very helpful. So, so like I said, the overall thing from this video is 
I don't recommend. I do use a Goda usually. I compare between all of them, and a Goda for some reason for me is almost always about 10% cheaper than everybody else. If you've got a site that works better than a Goda, go ahead and drop it in the comments section. But I do find a Goda to be pretty good deals uh, for flying to to and from America from Saigon to Saigon. So I mean, it seems to just work pretty well. But yeah, it, it's. It's, you've got to be more creative than just sitting there and punching in wherever you're at to wherever you need to be. Sometimes you need to think a little bit smarter. They don't want you to know that. Like my flight to New York was only like 50 bucks. But like if I programmed it all through the thing and just hit RSW to uh, Saigon, it never even showed me the options I came up with by just pr putting myself into New York first. So like you've got to understand that that's kind of how these things work. Um, if you can get a super cheap flight to New York around the time you want to come to to Vietnam, that is going to be your your option. You know, that's going to be the way to go with this. Um, I couldn't recommend doing that enough. Uh, the best places to fly from for the most direct flights are LAX and San Francisco. Uh, like I'm reading you this LAX flight, it's 20 hours, one stop. You can't beat that. You're almost always going to have a one stop. I think San Francisco is the only non-stop location back to Vietnam now if I remember right and you don't have to do a non-stop I don't people get really like bonerific over the uh, once the non-stop flight I personally like the stop it used to be the popular stop was Taipei that was the real popular first stop um, and Taipei and Incheon and then Tokyo those are the three popular stops <clears throat> I don't make them I don't mind doing them you know if Korea drops its crazy two PCR test thing, you could actually even plan even more deeper and try to do like a three day layover in Seoul and do a little bit of Seoul, Seoul searching in Seoul. It's an amazing country, it's very fun. Um, even three days, you know, you're not gonna see anything close to what you'd wanna see, but it would be cool to do. You know, once everything opens up, I can't, still can't believe that we're even, anyone's even shut down over COVID, it's so ridiculous. It's so annoying. Um, all these countries should be opened up. I don't know what's going on with Japan either. I wish Japan would just let me out of the airport, but Japan's rules are absolutely freaking insane. You have to get two applications. You have to hire a tour guide. The tour guide stays with you at all times. It is insane. There's no free travel in Japan right now, and it's costly expensive. I think they're bringing in like 10 people a day or some shit. It's some insanely slow number, a low number. So, I mean, it is what it is. My flight on the way back is going to suck, but I'll make the best out of it. You know, hopefully we're just going to keep shooting content like I have been here. I know I'm not in Vietnam, but I can still give you all the information about Vietnam. I've got page fulls of ideas, so we're going to try to do two videos a day. If one video does perform very well, like the news video did, then there's just going to be one video for that day. But, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to keep her moving. I'm going to keep trying to bring you guys really good content, keep trying to be helpful to you. Uh, if you need anything from me, your best bet is to, to join the Discord and, and connect with me in there. Or if you're a Patreon, you can just directly message me on the Patreon platform. But, yeah, I recommend Korean Air. I recommend ANA. I think Qatar Air is pretty good, too. I haven't flown them or one of the Qatar Airlines. That showed up a lot on my uh, me trying to get back here flight. And as ever, the worst thing you can do is try to do a flight last minute, like I had to do for both of mine. So if you can get a couple months ahead, you're going to have much larger selection. Um, a lot of these airlines, they'll let you upgrade for a small fee, from sometimes $25, $30 to, to pick your seat. I absolutely recommend that. If you're a big guy, just get the emergency row. It's always the way to go. I'm a, a window emergency row type guy. That's almost always what seat I try to get anywhere I go. So even, I'm looking here more, even the all Nippon uh, Airways, fantastic airline, ANA, is $16 million for the for one stop. So you can't beat that. $16 million for a one stop, 20 hour flight. So I personally would probably pick the $16 million over the $15 million, or the, oof, that's a tough choice. I'd probably save the $2 and go with, $200 and go with the Korean Air. So ANA is $16 million. Versus Korean Air, which is 12 million, 11, 11 million 389, and that's roughly uh, 500 bucks. 16 million is roughly 650, 700, I think. I'm just free balling numbers out of the top of my head. 
It's very easy to convert dong. So just type in 16 million dong to USD and it'll come up with the price right away on the Googles for you. So I hope you found this information helpful and valuable. If you are gonna be checking bags, it is gonna be a costly experience. I always try to put everything in one backpack. I did pick up some stuff here. I'm gonna just ship it back through the shipping service I use. He quoted me a pretty good price because I've, I've used him a lot. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna check a bag. There's no way I don't want to check a bag. It absolutely creates so much more hassle to the whole travel experience. It's so much easier if you just have a backpack. That's a little pro tip. But I understand some of you guys are moving here to Vietnam, so you need to bring your shit. Just know if you got to do a layover, you're going to want four or five hours for that shit then. I don't like small layovers. you got to deal with delays, baggage, all these things. Give yourself some time. Give yourself some time to walk around and stretch as well. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Stay frosty. See you on the next one. Peace out.